Hey, what's up, YouTubers? Welcome to my channel, Mr. Reef Buster. I'm your host, Monty. Um, today, we're going to talk about old tank syndrome. Uh, I'm currently having cyanobacteria in my tank, hair algae, and aptasia. And I'll be showing you guys um, how I remove most of them using a, doing a water change, which I haven't done on this tank in a while. So as you can see, the tank is... Um, Apta you know, it's got cyano all over it. There's aptasia building growing everywhere, and there are some red hair algae. Uh, for those of you um, who are new to the channel, I haven't uploaded a video uh, with my 45 gallon tank in a while because I've been so caught up busy with the Project Nano Reef episodes. So today I wanted to uh, take some time out and do a video on the tank. Um, but let's go ahead and let me show you guys how the tank is looking as far as the corals go. Uh, if you look at the previous video, there are some uh, significant growth. Not a lot, but there are significant growth. As you can see, my mushroom colony is spreading in two rocks. Um, my... Um, well, my Xenia, it's, uh, it's growing slowly, but it's not growing as fast as I thought or I was under the impression they would grow. Um, as you can see, the Aptasias on the rock, they're all over. I haven't uh, sprayed them with Aptasia X in a while, which I'll be doing today. My Toadstool, he's gotten bigger, he's healthy, he's fine. Um, my... Um, my plate anemone is he's uh he's about the same size since I gotten him. He hasn't grown too big. Um same with the long tentacle anemone. Um none it's probably because I do very little maintenance on this tank. Uh I, I just let the tank, you know, do its own thing most of the time. The last time I did a water change was two months ago. So that's probably the reason why there is an algae bloom on the tank as and also cyanobacteria on the sand. So we'll be taking care of addressing all those today. Um, if you if you guys watched episode eight of the Project Nano Reef on my Nano Reef, I have some turf algae, and on that video I just talked about how hard it is to get rid of it. But because they're not as a turf algae is stronger than regular hair algae, you can just scrub it off, and which I will demonstrate on this video. So I'm gonna start with the um, first. I'm gonna what I'll be doing is. Um, I'm going to be putting the Aptasia X in the tank, um, target, targeting the Aptasias and throw, you know, putting that chemical on the Aptasias mouth. And after that, I'll start the water change. The reason I do the Aptasia X first because it does um, cloudy up the water uh, when you, you know, put the Aptasia X in the water. So that's why I wanted to do it before I started doing the water change. So the excess the white particles from the Aptasia X I can siphon out as part of the water change. So here you're going to see me uh, targeting targeting Aptasias and you know injecting them with the Aptasia X and that's what you guys want to do. Don't just dump the Aptasia X in the water. Um, target target the Aptasia's mouth and inject them with the with the liquid and that's the best way to kill them. Now you have to be diligent when it comes to Aptasia. Um, I haven't been doing that, so that's why they kind of over, you know, they're all over my tank. But if you do it regularly or every two to three days, you will have the bring the Aptasia under control, which I'm gonna start doing. I, I, you know, I've been I've been busy, so I haven't had the time to take care of this 45 gallon reef tank. So going forward, I will be, you know, dosing the Aptasia X on a um, daily or every every other day basis to get rid of the Aptasia on my tank. Because if you let if you let it take over your tank, it will stop your coral growth. It will kill your corals because they will sting it. Because Aptasia is like a nuisance uh, anemone technically. Um, so here I'm gonna I'm just targeting all the Aptasias right now. I'm targeting the Aptasia X. And after I do this, I'm going to, you know, clean out the glass, take out the algae, 
and we'll start doing the water change. But I'll talk about the main topic of this video, the old tank syndrome. So what, what an old tank syndrome is, is when an established tank, now this tank has been running for over two years now. So when an old tank starts having the same similar problems as a new tank does, like having algae bloom or bubble algae or cyano so it could happen to old tanks established tanks and this is what's happening on my tank so there um i did a phosphate test on my tank and the phosphate levels came out to 1.63 which is really really high which is what's causing the hair algae growth and the cyano growth on my tank and so as you can see I'm scrubbing off all the hair algae off of my rocks uh, especially they're not all over the rocks in certain spots they are they are there but you want to address it immediately you don't want to wait for the algae the hair algae to go all over your rocks you want to, you know, nip it in the bud. So that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm scrubbing off. And as you can see with the hair algae, they come off really easy. Just take a brush and just scrub it hard. It'll come off. Unlike turf algae, um, that it's hard to get off with a brush. You might have to pinch it or dose it with some type of chemical like I'll be doing with the Continuum Aquatics uh, Bacter Cleaner M on my Nano Reef. So you have to, you know, dose it with some chemicals to weaken the algae. Then you could take it and scrub it out. So that's what I'm doing right now in this tank. Is I'm just making sure, getting all the spots where the algaes are. And, you know, when you're doing a water change like this, you don't want to keep your pumps or anything running. You want to contain the algae and the algae infested water in the display tank so you can siphon all that algae out, which I'll be showing you in a moment. Um, now, with with old tank syndrome, it's the reason it happens is that if you, especially if you don't do daily, you know, weekly maintenance on the tank, if you just let the tank be by itself, eventually phosphates will start building in the tank slowly, slowly, and then the it will leach into the rocks, and that's what's gonna cause, um, that's what's gonna cause your, you know, algae growth in the tank, and. And sometimes, even if you do a phosphate check, and you might you might get a zero reading on the phosphate, that's because that's because most of it is in the in your in your rock structure, or if you have algae already, those algae is actually sucking up all that phosphate. So even if you sometimes even if you do a phosphate check, you might get a very low reading. Uh, thankfully, in my case, I didn't get a low reading. It was a 1.63. So it was an alarming rate, so that's what I'm doing. I'll be doing about a 50% water change right now. Um, for those of you uh, who are not familiar, so I already have my salt water mix ready in my basement. Uh, once I'm done siphoning all the water, you know, 50% of the water out of this tank, I'm just going to pump up um, the salt water from my basement and, uh, you know, put it into the tank. So as you can see, I'm just going around... Uh, Picking up in the beginning, what I'm doing is I'm using the wider um, whole part of the hose. I'm just siphoning um, the sand right now to just get the cyano, the red cyano out of the sand. And after that, I'm just taking, I'm just using the smaller two part just to target, um, target siphon all the floating algae that's in the tank. You want to get rid of all your floating algae out of your tank if you do not do that if you just scrub it off your rock they will be floating around and then they will land somewhere and they'll they're just not going to get out of your tank you have to siphon it out do not let it go into your sump or let, let it stay inside your tank you want to make sure you siphon that you know algae that you scrubbed off of the rocks um so right now i'm just going around right here just picking up where the algaes are just settled on the on the sand just target siphoning them out um, even though it's not you know the with the water with the way the water is being siphoned out since I had to remove uh, since I had to remove the cyanide from the sand most of the 25 percent of the water I siphoned out was actually took the site you took the cyano out of the sand not the algae so I have limited water to remove and remove the algae with so I'm trying I'm doing my best to remove most of the algae there are, even after I'm done there will be so, some algae um, 
some algae in the tank but it's gonna be very minimal so um, so uh, right now I'm just there we go I'm just refilling the tank back up with fresh salt water mix now another quick tip about the salt water mix do not mix your salt water right before you do the water change you want to give it at least 24 hours to mix properly before you put it into the tank um, now my salt water I have a salt water uh, mixing station so I've had my salt water mixed in there for about a couple of weeks so it's good to go it's the uh, same salinity as the salinity in my tank I already checked you know measured that before I started the water change you want to make sure you try to keep the you know salinity as close to as your you know tanks uh, water uh, salt levels um, so right now we're just putting the water back in and if you guys um, have any questions as far as old tank syndrome or cyanobacteria and algae problem leave in the comment section below I'll try to answer your questions as best as I can if you have any suggestions of your own leave that in the comment section below as well I would like to learn something new from you guys um, I know I'm, a, I'm pretty new at this um, I mean I'm st I consider myself an you know beginner even though I've been doing it for almost three years now but there's so much to learn in this hobby it's just you never know enough so right now we're just filling back up the water and you're gonna see there you're gonna see some some algae floating around I wasn't able to remove all the algae because I did not want to do more than 50% water change on the tank um, so that's why there's gonna be still some algae floating around as you can see but uh, most of that it's it's small it's little enough for it to get go down into my sump and my protein skimmer will take care of that so since I have two protein skimmers on my sump refugium I am counting on those to remove that but you don't want to do that with all your algae in the tank you want to remove as much as you can through the siphoning process and like I as you can see right you know I'm just you know leveling out the sand make sure it's all evened out all over the place um, the tank's going to be cloudy for a couple of hours because it just did a water change. Um, but after a couple of hours, it'll be crystal clear. Uh, I wish I could, you know, we could go on so you can see the tank after all the cloudiness goes away. But this is already turning into a 15 minute video. I don't want to bore you guys. So, uh, probably in the next video, I'll show you guys what the tank looks like. And as far as, um, the future of this 45 gallon tank um i'm this right now i'm just have softies in the tank i don't have any too many sps or lps in the tank but once i take care of the the cyano not the cyano the aptasia problem in the tank I will put more corals, more SPS and LPSs. Uh, not so much SPS um, because I don't have the, I don't think I have the proper lighting for SPS growth yet. So um, just gonna be sticking to softies and uh, LPSs, and this tank mainly will just stay uh, as softies and uh, SP LPSs. I'm not gonna put too much SPS. I tried putting one or two. It didn't do so well because my LEDs are not that good. Um, so here it is, guys. The tank is done. Um, it's clearing up slowly but it will take a couple hours like I said um, the so video is almost over if you guys have any questions or comments leave it in the comment section below if you guys like the video hit the like button for those of you who are not subscribed to my channel um, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button so you get future notification as to when I have the next video coming out and that's it guys uh, if you guys wanted to know if, if you didn't catch in the beginning of the video if you have an Aptasia problem I am using the Red Sea Aptasia X um, to you know combat the Aptasia problem I'm having uh, if you can buy it at any any store any pet store or online retailer like Marine Depot or bulk resupply those guys will have it so if you if you're in the market go check those places out and as far as the cyano goes 
cyano, all you have to do is just siphon it out and give it give your tank more water flow because the cyano will grow in low low water flow area so keep that in mind so as you can see my tank is right now going into sleep mode the moonlight came on the blues came on and it's time to say good night i appreciate you guys watching the video if you have any comments make sure you leave it in the comment section below thank you for watching guys and happy reefing